Hi everyone, welcome back. I've got a whole bundle of stuff on the desk today. So I'm going to do some more of the slide things. And first of all, I've got a couple of things just to go through or let you know about. I have sent off the um, postcards so far. There have been five of the six people have got in touch with me and I just wanted to give you an update on that. So Janet Dawkins and Nat Williams, now they're both in South Australia and they're people that I've known on Facebook for a long, long time. So that was quite amusing that they both came out. And Bonnie Nevels and Silverpenny Artisans, I think it is, they are both in Ontario in Canada, which is another coincidence. So they will be sent off, not tomorrow, but probably you know, next week when the post office reopens. I've got a really busy day tomorrow, so I can't do it. And also Sarah Lopez got in touch and she is in California, I believe, from memory. So far, Holly hasn't gotten in touch. So Holly, if you're watching, can you please send me your information to claim your prize? Otherwise, I will have to do a redraw. Now, I also wanted to let you know that today I've had a couple of ideas of my own and plus I was looking on YouTube to see if other people had been using the slides and the answer of course is yes. So I'm particularly taking some cues from Ephemera Vintage Garden and My, my Cottage Crafts and I hope those ladies don't mind that I'm kind of taking what they did and putting my own spin on it. And also to one of the comments I had last time, Susan Schultes, I think you pronounce it, and Susan suggested that I use these parts of the um, negative as a tab in the book. So I'm going to try that today as well. So thanks Susan for that suggestion. And now let's get on with the process for today. All right, so I've got my home journal out because I thought that, that would be a good one to put some of these results into, just to show you what they're going to be like once they get in. And, you know, I just have a bunch of stuff <laughs> all over the place trying to work out what I'm going to do. I might just move some of that out of the way and grab some of these slides. Now, where's my knife gone? Here it is. So this one, I'm just trying to see what they are. I'm trying to find a, a slide viewer app, but there isn't one. There's slide scanning apps, which are a real pain because you have to actually hold them up to a source and then scan them. And I just wanted something to have a quick look at them. So I've been holding them over a white screen against the computer. And that seems to be doing the trick. I can kind of see what they are. But there's nothing really that I think I want to keep anyway. But that was just a, you know, a thought that I would have a, a viewer so I could actually look at them. And I just wanted to grab one of the ones that's the same. So what Susan suggested is that I put a couple on top of one another like this. And that would make them stronger. I'm just going to cut another one because not all of them. Like one side doesn't seem to be coming out very cleanly. So it's a bit hard to use it. Let's see if I can get this out. Oh, that's a bit better. So I thought that's probably number one that I'm going to do today. And thanks for the feedback on the things I did last time. As I said, I really enjoyed playing with these yesterday, which is why I thought I'd try again today and do a bit more. Let's bring all that into place. Make sure that's all lined up then. And see how that's now lined up. I can never get this in camera. Sorry about that. There you go. I've lined them all up. And then I can put it in as a, a little tab, like here. I don't have a picture to go on there yet. So that is now a little tab in the book. That looks really good. And on the other side, you can see it there too. Get that in shot for you. So that's one way to use those little bits that I'm pulling out. So I had a thought about using a stamp. Now I don't know if this is going to work. That should work, shouldn't it? Yeah. Seems to be the right size. 
and I will put some paper on it. I put paper down yesterday, I know, but I thought I'd just try that again because it makes a really good base. And obviously, if you want the Kodak thing to show, then don't put the paper down. But if you don't want the Kodak thing to show, you need to cover it. And then I will cut this out. Straighten that up a bit. Okay. Probably tear that like I did yesterday actually. Prefer the torn edge. Where's my stamp? Oh, first of all I want to ink on the edges and ink the paper generally because this is quite white. This old this book, it just hasn't gone into that nice vintage realm yet. And then I want to put the stamp in there. Let's see if it's going to be enough. So instead of gluing it, I'm going to get some of that washi I had before and use that because it's going to be a bit of a delicate operation, this one. I'm going to start by putting that on the bottom of the stamp and then seeing if I can position that here so it's there. This is just a Captain Cook stamp but it's a bit vintagey that's why I thought I'd use it. Of course you could use double sided tape or something to do this instead of washi just I had the washi handy. And I am going to put some down the sides because otherwise it'll push through there. And I don't think putting it over the stamp, no, because this is quite pale, you're not seeing it through the stamp because the stamp's quite opaque. So I'm getting not that much shadow from the side of the stamp. You can see there that you're not really seeing the shadow of the washi through the back very much. Now also, I do want to, I was thinking I might put another, no I probably won't do that, but I do want to do some more stamping like I did yesterday because I really like that effect. And I did get a stamp block out today so I could manage it a little better. So I'm going to see what numbers and things I've got on here. What about this one? Just managed to get that on. And then the number up the top. I'll actually put it down the side here. I know that's gone into the music paper but that's the kind of look I wanted to achieve. Now the other thing I want is that round stamp again. I do have other round stamps but they're wooden ones and I've got this one so it doesn't matter if I'm using the same one again. So I really like the look of this round against here especially because it says received. Now, I'll probably stick this down, I think, on the page. So I don't need to do anything about that. Let me grab my book. For those of you who don't know who Captain Cook is, this is the bicentenary, so that's 200 years. And he discovered Australia because I just realised that maybe there are people who don't actually know that, who don't live in Australia and therefore aren't familiar with our history. I'm going to put this down here and I could even make it into a little tuck spot. So I will, I'm not sure what I'll tuck in it yet, I'm not going to do anything tucking today, but I will put it down here.
Is it on the right side? Yes. You can see there that that's now a little tuck spot. That's good. Okay. So there's one. Yeah, let's try some more. That's another one. Actually, I've got that one that I covered before, haven't I? I'm going to put some ink around. I'm also getting out some, well, this is primer, but gesso, whatever you want to call it. This is actually a primer, which is really messy. <laughs> I didn't think it would be that messy. It's clearly been lying on its side. And I thought I might run some stuff around it. Just make those numbers and those um, music a bit more hidden than what they are at the moment. Well, let me get that in focus. Okay, so that's just sort of step one. So I'll be doing some more to that in a moment. And then this next one, I'm going to cover with some tissue. Well, that's, actually, I might do the back of it because if I do the back, it doesn't have as much pattern on it because the tissue's see-through. And this is just a serviette. So that's a good way of getting some pattern onto the edge with that. Now I think I'll try and put maybe some lace over it. Is that going to hide it too much? It may well. I'm just delving into my box of buttons here. Having gathered even more supplies now, I'm going to try some things. now. I've got this little teacup. This is one of the chipboard pieces from the Alice collection, the Stamperia Alice collection. I'm thinking about sitting it in there. And I also have, which you probably saw when I first started, a piece of acetate. It's blue acetate, but it's still acetate because it peels off. And if I can try and cut something in the size of the slide. Let's see if I can get something cut. And where's my slide gone here? And here's my teapot or my teacup. I tried to find the teapot but it was just too big to fit in the space unfortunately. So this is got acetate covered back and front Good to be able to use some things like this that I've had forever. If I stick that on here. Okay, let's try and stick it on first and then put the acetate on the back and see. Peel the um, blue off in a minute. Now, this will be stuck down in the book. So it's not like the um, you're going to see the back of it, which is a bit of a mess. It's more about the fact that there's clear all around the teacup. Now I could have just stuck the slide into the book and then the teacup in the middle. I just think it finishes off a bit better with the actual acetate behind it. And I've got that acetate so I may as well use it. Let's see, find a page to put this. Oh, I want something that's got some green on it. That's all fairly heavily embellished, that one. And I also probably want like a whiter page rather than something that's very coloured. I could put it down the bottom here. And that's got a cream background then. Let's pop it down. I've still got to finish this. You can see I've got my tags in here still showing me what to finish. Sorry, I didn't give you a look at it. There it is there. So it's against that cream background, but you're not getting um, the clear through, but you can see that it's sitting, you know, level with the frame rather than behind the frame. That's another one. Now, what else have I got? 
this. So I think I'm going to go back to my paper and put some more paper down here. And I'm going to use some dress pattern paper. Now I will go back to using my normal thing which is the binding medium or the matte medium. So I do want this to stick down fully. If I can get this to flow, to buy myself a new pokey tool because I think I've practically ruined this one using it for doing things like that. So don't use it for things like that, okay? If you want it to stay in good condition, you probably shouldn't do that. But it's just so handy. And then I'll put some paper along here. And let's see what else I've got. Just be careful when you're tearing it off that you don't tear it off too soon and find that you pull it off rather than tearing it. So I'm just going to chop it with the scissors to prevent that from happening. Now I've got various bits of stuff now. I'll just put some more lace down on this one. A bit noisy. I've got some cogs and some keys and they're jumping around a little bit. Maybe this tiny little one. I think this one will go in. It's a bit weird to have it with all the pretty flowers, but you know, maybe maybe it's just that juxtaposition that will look okay. I need a piece of paper to stick it on. Because it's a sticker. And this one should be fine. Doesn't matter which one it goes on, as long as it goes on one. And then this can be chopped down a little bit. Okay, and then this can go over the top. I'm trying to find a page that it looks nice on. Maybe I'll put it here and I'll do another tuck spot with it. I really like the, the black line and the still seeing the words coming through and the brown paper which has made it look really vintage really easily. I think I'll just cut a little piece for here. I was looking for my um, palette knife but I was actually holding it. <laughs> my daughter was telling me this story yesterday that years and years ago when she worked in a place she no longer works, hasn't for many years, there were these two what she called older women, probably my age, you know, probably in their 50s or 60s at the time. Anyway, they were walking around and they came up to her and they said, we can't find, I don't know, let's call her Gladys. <laughs> we can't find Gladys's glasses. And we'll call them Gladys and Mary. So we've been looking for an hour. We've checked everywhere. We've walked around the whole building and we cannot find Gladys's glasses. And then Angela said, <laughs> my daughter, well, Mary, if you look, I think that you do have Gladys's glasses on and your glasses are sitting on top of your head. So apparently what had happened is Gladys had put her glasses down and Mary had taken them and put them on, not realising, because she already had hers, you know, pushed up on top of her head. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> That's probably something that I'll do very shortly, things like that. And I thought the funny thing was that they weren't her glasses. She'd just taken her friends and was wearing them and didn't seem to notice that the um, that they didn't, you know, they couldn't possibly have been the same prescription as hers. That's nice, isn't it? Anyway, so we've got that one done. Keep that little bit. I'll do some more of these, I think. And... Oh, that's right. I had one over here that I was doing. I forgot about this little one. And maybe I'll put the white lace in that one. 
I don't actually like that lace in there. I think this one would be much nicer. Yep, I'll put this one in here. And then with this one here, oh, I'm not going to do any more of that lace. I don't like that lace particularly. It's a bit thick, thick and heavy. But what I wanted to do was get a page. I might not be able to do this in here actually. I might have to get another, another piece of paper. Now I'm going to go back to my book and see if I can find somewhere to put this. I'm not sure I'm going to be successful, but I'll have a little look. It's going to go down as a flap in the book here. And then under here, I would like to put a picture, you know, one of my own pictures, but I don't have one. So instead, I'm going to find one of my photo booths that I like. Let me find something with oh, this a cute little girl. Now I need to make sure that this is down so the little girl is showing through the window. It's a church somewhere found some pictures from my hometown when I looked at some of them yesterday from where I grew up so that was interesting country country New South Wales so I didn't um I recognized them immediately of course I went oh look that's the main street and then I went back and had a look at some of the notes that whoever owned these had left and they were indeed from my hometown so <laughs> Funny how you recognise things. I haven't lived there for, well, since I was 17, so that was a while ago. But I still remembered what it looks like. I like the numbers on the back of these. See, 731. These ones are very different to the others. I can't remember what the others were. I know these ones are, not these ones. I think these were bought as a set because it's... Um, Hong Kong by night it's all in one little packet so they were obviously bought like I think it I'm not sure if you can do it now but it could be bought as a set from like the gift shop you know the tourist gift shop people often bought slides and for those who didn't live through the 70s one of the things that people used to do was have a slide night and you would go to somebody's house and you would sit there for several hours while they flick through all of their slides. So obviously they had a projector and put it up on the wall. And one by one, they would go through all of their holiday slides and they'd tell you all about them. And that was pretty boring as a kid, even as an adult. But I used to have to go to things like that with my parents when I was a kid. And I was always like, really, we have to do this? <laughs> I've still got a few more things to use, so I will keep going and see what I can come up with. Yes, I think if you're old enough to remember a slide night, then you must be around my age. So that would be interesting to see how many people who watch me have actually remembered us going to slide nights. And what's more, how did you enjoy them? Because I remember them as being terribly boring. I guess unless you were the person hosting the slide night, in which case, I guess it would be great because you'd be able to show off to all your friends about what you what you went and saw and where you travelled to. And I'm not sure that the destinations were very interesting, though. I mean, I don't think they were sort of overseas because people didn't really travel overseas back then. Not as much as they do now. There wasn't the money to do it and there wasn't the means to do it. 
My father used to tell me a story about these people in our town. Now, when I grew up there, there was about 8,000 people, but there wouldn't have been that many when he's talking about. But there's still, you know, a few thousand. And uh, he said that when these people were going to England, they were going on the boat because there wasn't wasn't possible to go by to fly at that point. He um, said it, they went on the train, they caught the local train down to Sydney, I guess, and half the town turned out to farewell them because they were going to England. <laughs> Funny stories. <laughs> Now that's pretty much a, a normal occurrence, isn't it? People trotting off overseas. I've done it myself quite a few times, luckily, but, well, not at the moment, but normally when we don't have COVID, then it's a normal thing to do. But back in the day, it wasn't. So it was a big event that these people were going to England for three months or something. Yes. I also have a photo of my grandfather. His bowls club was going somewhere. They were flying, again, from this little town I lived in. And uh, they, I've got a photo at some um, TAA. And TAA is an airline that no longer exists in Australia, but it used to. And they have a photo of the pilot and the... Um, hostesses and the the bowls the, all the the men on the bowls team of which my grandfather was one and they're all going I guess they were going to Sydney or Melbourne or somewhere for a tournament I don't know somewhere for a tournament I don't really know it doesn't say but they took a picture of them on the tarmac with all of the the people standing out the front all on down the steps and all along the front of the aircraft like standing on the on the tarmac and that's quite a funny thing when you think about it it wouldn't happen these days would it it'd be quite strange if it did happen these days because you know, they wouldn't let people do that but back in the day that's the sort of thing that they let them do so there you go how times have changed just in my generation and in, well in my father's and grandfather's generation they've changed tremendously because when my father grew up back in the 30s he was born in 1930 and he used to travel in a sulky with his mum to go anywhere because that was the mode of transport and he rode a horse to school he always had a story to tell. I miss his stories, even though I heard them so many times over the years. Since he, since he left us last year, I miss his stories. I've got them to hand on now. I always tell my children when he was around to listen to their grandfather's stories because he was a great storyteller. And when he was gone, when he's gone, you won't hear them anymore. And they used to get, oh yes, do we have to listen again? We've heard them, but I think family history is very important. I think it's good to listen to the stories of the older generation. It's a completely different world in which they grew up. And just like my world's a completely different world to how my children grew up and, you know, the generations today. So I think it's important to learn the lessons and to remember that it wasn't always so easy in life to do things. It was always a lot harder. It's so easy now to do anything. That's one of the lists. I'm going to be doing a, a thing on lists very soon. Prompts. Prompts for your journaling. That's on my list to do. Well, no, that wasn't a joke. <laughs> But it is on my list of things to do, to actually go through and start creating some prompts for journaling, things like that, you know. So I might do that sooner rather than later, I think, because we've, I keep getting reminded that I need to do things like that, time short. 
here to get things done and remembered and write them down. I mean they may just go all in the bin when I'm gone but at least I've taken the effort to write it down. I hope my research doesn't go in the bin though. I spent more than 40 years researching our family and my daughter has promised that she'll look after it for me and hopefully one of the other people in the family will become interested in it at some point. She can hand it on to them then. I think I'll put this bit of lace down on here and then I think I'll have a break for a little while because I've been going now for like an hour and a half and my back gets sore when I keep sitting here. I have to get a better chair because it's really annoying me that I can't sit for more than this before I have to get up. Maybe I'll do this one. This has got stuff all over it. I've obviously coloured it with something at one point and rusted it. Quite nice though. Now I've just got a sticky backed butterfly that I'll put in here to create that effect of the um, you know, the botanical slide image. It's just white on the back, which is why I'll probably put it into a book so then you won't see it. The other thing I could have done, I've done that before, is to paint the back in black and then put another slide over the top. So I've done that black shadow effect before and it really is effective. Okay, I think I'm going to stop there for the day and I'll come back and do some more tomorrow because right at the moment I need to stand up and stretch so I hope you enjoyed that and you've got some more ideas and I will be playing again tomorrow with these so this is Deborah thank you very much for watching and I will see you tomorrow cheers